is a bamboo lumber yard, essentially. Uh, we're processing bamboo to elevate it as a durable building material and ultimately provide better homes for all Filipinos, as you said. Um, yeah, that's our elevator pitch. Um, <laughs> but really, yeah, we're, we're, we're honored to be here. Um, we're, our journey in bamboo has just been five years so far, really in earnest full time, five years. Um, and uh, it's been great to uh, like enter into this realm, um, which is still relatively small and well connected. Um, but we've sure. been like warm, warmly received um, and gotten a lot of help from people along the way. And so uh, happy to like share, uh, do our part in um, sharing our lessons learned as well. Awesome. And um, the, to talk a little bit more about the collective. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's employee based, right? This is like a, a kind of uh, uh, a set, interesting setup, which uh, is challenging too, because you really have to have like the right people, the right positions or roles, right? So um, I, I read somewhere something like 40 employees or something like that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for opening this topic. It is a big one. We are, as I said, five years in and as a cooperative, we're only one year in. Um, oh. We, when we got started, we started as a sole proprietorship with my husband and I being the co-founders. Um, and uh, we were always looking, you could see it in our name, Hawaiian Collective was the name we were founded under. We had this idea in mind at some point, but we got some good advice early on to not start a business and a co-op at the exact same time, because um, that's taking off quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, we took that uh, we took that to heart. We started as a sole proprietorship. Um, and then last year, or really in the last two years, we began the conversion to co-op. And it's with the uh, employees who um, have been some of them. And we, we started as a team of seven, so much smaller than we are today. Yeah. Um, and, and there are still many of those initial seven that are now uh, cooperative members and leaders in the organization. Um, but yeah, it's it was, we really were gravitated toward this model as we considered how would this business grow. Um, we were always a social enterprise and when you're comparing that uh, to, you know, what the growth options out there, there's uh, the traditional corporation and there's co-op. Um, mm -hmm. the, the social enterprise in us felt like the co-op values made a lot of sense. Um, it's already kind of baked into the legal structure of a co-op um, to be a social enterprise. And then just the state of the bamboo industry in the Philippines, uh, what we're working with are bamboo as a wild stock, largely held by, you know, smallholder farmers. Um, harvesting is the same uh, people, the, the, the employees of the, of, the, of the factory are all rural, um, you know, uh, local um islanders yep. and so what do they have to invest in a corporation you know maybe not as much but yep. as yep. a collective they have a lot they so lot. um yep. so it made a lot of sense uh to appeal to them as our initial investors yeah. and and was that because in the philippines they're like is is that to have cooperative is it something like common or, or is it not common anymore? Or what? I mean, this is also kind of important, right? The, the, the like, yeah. the environment, let's say, where mm -hmm. you want to set up that uh, probably uh, in, in some places it's not going to work. And it seems like in, in the Philippines, it's, it's really, it does work. Making yeah, it right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Co-ops are definitely around in the Philippines and have been for a while. Um, and people are particularly used to them in uh, in the province, in the rural setting. There's a lot of agricultural co-ops. Um, what they don't tend to do is get much bigger than maybe mm -hmm. their their um, one uh, community, um, and that's something that we're trying to do. And of course, there are there are always uh, uh, examples that that do get big. Um, 
<laughs> certainly microfinance co-ops are, are all over the country. And, and um, yeah, the, you're used to seeing that kind of model. And so we're trying to say, well, why not with bamboo? And so yeah. to, to get the idea right, so basically you buy from uh, uh, like uh, the small farmers. So let's say like 100 uh, uh, small farmers who have like their plots of bamboo. Um, I've read also that, uh, you have a, a specific or special bamboo there, which is called Tinik. Yeah. Is that nice. Bambusa Blue <laughs> Menea or something like that, right? The, the yes, scientific yes. name? Yeah? Okay. And um, basically, you, you, you pay directly the small farmers and then you, you, um, uh, uh, you, you transform it into the poles or into boards or whatever you're going to use for the construction, right? And right. Um, how's the, or what can you share about the numbers? So um, probably before that, they got like a X amount for bamboo, which was mostly for scaffolding or, or did they use it also for construction? Was there a market there for those small farmers for the bamboo poles or was it like very like unexistent probably? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty much, pretty much, um, it's basically been, it's called backyard bamboo. Um, it's been used by the family for generations for, for, personal projects, housing, fencing, um, just on the farm. Um, and then of course, occasionally maybe a, a resort would open up and they would buy in bulk like for their project, but that's about it. Um, there hasn't been any sort of real um, Income growth stream. in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond oh. the, the the small Pyogs beach huts that people are used to seeing. Um, yeah, yeah. And what can you tell us about this uh, um, Kawaiian tinik uh, bamboo from the Philippines? Is it is it similar to uh, maybe the the mosso or the guadua or how how should yeah. we imagine this bamboo? How is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm glad to say it's coming under increasing uh, research. More and more um, universities are are checking it out. We've shipped to Hong Kong and. Wow. Uh, worked with universities in um, the UK and the US um, as they're adding now Bamboo Sublumiana to the the anthem out there of, of construction grade um, bamboos. And so it's more on the uh, spectrum of Guadua than let's say Moso, which is um, not structured, not good for construction. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a very strong bamboo, uh, species and it's endemic to the Philippines. It's widespread, um, from, from seaside to mountaintop. It's, uh, pretty hardy and, uh, and how tall is it? It gets, uh, well, so we harvest, we use the midsection, which is an average mm -hmm. of 10 meters. Um, mm -hmm. so we leave about 25% still in the field um mm -hmm. yeah so it organic gets, matter it's 15 meters yeah 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 okay yeah it's good yeah 15, and does is it thorny or not thorny yes it's that thorny. is what tinic translates to in ah. english thorn ah. yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's the spiky important, bamboo right because yeah. the harvesting of thorny bamboo is much more challenging than let's say a dendrocalamus asper where basically it has little, sometimes little hairs that maybe, but it's not a big deal. But when you have like thor thorns, like big thorns, yeah. or even small thorns, but thorns is like serious yeah. uh, uh, thing there. If you get that in your fingers or... <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it takes some maintenance for sure. Um, yeah. And so lots that's... of machete or uh, how mm. do you, uh, is it manual work probably most of, you don't have machines there probably because they're small farmers. So yeah. they kind of right. do everything on site and you get mm -hmm. the 10 meter bamboo pole already thorn free, which right. you pick up or do they bring it to uh, the, uh, to the collective? Um, right. So we, we, the, the harvesters typically are responsible for getting it to the roadside where it'll get picked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's the other yeah. thing, right? Because depending on the, on the topography, let's say, I, I've never been to the Philippines, but probably it's not all flat, right? So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you could yeah. have the hills or steep hills, and uh, on the roadside you have accessibility. You can get the truck there 
pick it up right. and and go else. The 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 other part is the hard part with it. Probably have animals or on the shoulder or whatever works, right? Yeah. 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 That's CrossFit yeah. for real. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. The ones who have been harvesting bamboo know what we're talking about. The other ones, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and okay, so um, I get a much better uh, picture of uh, how this bamboo there is. It seems really to be uh, similar to uh, the guadua from Latin America, um, what you've been sharing so far. The color also, is it like uh, uh, green? And then once it start, once you harvest it and all that, it, it dries out and gets like uh, a little bit yellowish, grayish. Golden. Golden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah depending on the sun ray and all the, the external factors, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you go... They, uh, you, you try, and you do the whole um, 